Hey you guys, so I am back again and I have been getting the same question a lot lately so I figured I'd make a little video on it for you guys. I've got my top six books for respiratory therapy students and, you know, a good review for RTs if that's something that you're looking for, and the top two guides that I use throughout my clinical rotations. So the first book, and I'm going to go in order of my favorites, Green's Respiratory Therapy, a practical and essential tutorial on core concepts of respiratory care. And the name kind of sums it all up. The book is by Robert Green Jr. He's an ND and an RRT. So basically, he takes all of the concepts that he noticed that students struggled with a lot. He used to do a lot of tutoring for RT students, so he has a lot of experience breaking down these subjects in a way that's really understandable, and he kind of knows which areas to focus on more because he would see students coming in with the same confusion or the same issue. He's really able to focus on a lot of these things. And it, you know, it covers everything from starting out with the gas laws to ABG covering uh, compensated, uncompensated partials and mixes and the pressure gradients throughout the lungs, mechanical ventilation, diseases, everything. Honestly, I really wish I had this book throughout the whole program because I was going back and reading different sections for review and I was like, oh my god, if I had seen this the first time, I would not have spent I would not have spent hours studying it. So the second book, the second and the third book actually, because it's a two-part series, uh, the first one is called The Ventilator Book, and the next one's called The Advanced Ventilator Book. They're by William Owens, MD, and in the first book, he really touches on all the essentials of how to choose which mode for each vent and kind of basic changes and just really superficial in the beginning, which is great, especially when you're first learning or if you just want a quick review on quick changes to make or different, you know, if you have a specific type of disease process, what mode you need to have the patient on, this book is perfect for that and he manages to make it funny. So anybody that can make mechanical ventilation humorous in the slightest, they, that's a win in my book. <laughs> the second book that he has, the advanced ventilator book, dives deeper. It goes into things like optimal PEEP, pulmonary vasodilators, prone positioning, ECMO, all of these things. So, you know, it's going to dive a little bit deeper into things that may be better when you take your advanced mechanical ventilation class, or again, if you're just looking for a quick review that is going to keep you awake while you read it. Also, that's a perfect book to use. And these, both of these two books that I mentioned are relatively short reads and if you happen to have uh, Kindle Unlimited when I read these books I got them for free through well free you know you have to pay a subscription to have Kindle Unlimited but they were under that that section so I was able to get them for free through Kindle Unlimited and I will link all of these books down below also I think I forgot to say that in the beginning but I will link everything for you guys as well so the next book is Mechanical Ventilation Made Easy, written by Michael J. Fisher, RRT. So you know that this guy's gonna know what he's talking about because a lot of other books that you read are written from the perspective of, you know, a physician or someone that's not diving very deep. And that was one thing that did bother me a little bit about the previous book I mentioned. Sometimes it would say, if you have a question about X, Y, and Z, talk to your respiratory therapist. And I went, but I'm learning to be the respiratory therapist. This is what I'm trying to figure out also. And you know, when you're in that introduction stage and learning about all of it. So this book does go a little bit deeper. Um, it's really great for definitions and how to fix different acid-based disturbances, but it's a very quick read compared to, you know, say a textbook. The next book is a pan, <laughs> this name cracks me up because I don't feel like there's any such thing. The Painless Guide to Mastering clinical acid-base balance. And this is by, I'm reading the name, I'm not sure if I'm gonna say the last name right, Benjamin Abello. And this is really great for anyone that's just starting to learn how to manage acid-base balances or someone that wants a review. It does go very deep. It starts from chemistry aspect of everything. It's really great about breaking down the terminology. And if you wanna know anything about managing you know, your patient based off of their ABGs, this is the book to get. And one of the last books, A Bedside Guide to Mechanical Ventilation. And this is by Kenneth Nugent, MD, and Eva Norbach, MD. I'm probably saying her last name wrong and I'm so sorry. I just, 
I'm sorry. <laughs> This particular book is very direct and to the point. It's kind of like cliff notes for mechanical ventilation. It also covers not only just mechanical ventilation as a whole, but it covers core concepts and treating patients beyond just mechanical ventilation. So, you know, it looks at things like fluid balancing and caring for a tracheostomy, which is important because we need to know these things as well, not just mastering the vent. There's a lot more that goes to caring for a patient that is being mechanically ventilated than just the machine. So this book does a good job at kind of covering all of the aspects, but it is very short and to the point. It's, you know, everything is bullet pointed and very direct. So if you don't like a lot of extra fluff in your books, this is a good book. And then I know I've talked to you guys about these two things before. The two pocket guides I used, my favorite was Respiratory Notes by Gary C. White. It is thicker, so it can be a little bit difficult to carry in your pocket depending on the size of your scrub pockets but it covers a little bit of everything there's a little bit of pediatrics adult disease process abgs a little bit of everything so you don't have to worry about carrying multiple books now this brings me to the next set of pocket guides that i'll talk to you guys about which is oaks oaks has a fantastic set of pocket guides and let me just make sure uh so there's a general pocket guide, which is kind of, you know, basic, but if you do try to get into any kind of complicated questions, it does refer you to a different guide that they have. They have one for pediatrics, mechanical ventilation, ABGs, hemodynamics. Sorry, I'm reading off the sheet to make sure I don't forget anything. And all of these guides go into fantastic detail, but the only downside is that you can't carry five or six books in your pocket. You know, you can't carry five or six guides in your pocket. So you just have to hope that, you know, whichever guide you're taking is the one that you need that day. But then again, if you're very comfortable with general and maybe it's your first pediatric rotation and you feel a little bit shaky, you know you're gonna need that book. So just stick that book in your pocket. And those are a little bit more compact than the respiratory therapy notes. So they are easier to carry if you're just taking one. And the nice thing about this as well is you can buy the Oaks guides separately or you can buy them in bundles. Very very often if they're bought in bundles, they're a little bit cheaper or even you get things like recently I think there was something about getting free lifetime updates for new versions if you bought a whole bundle only. So there's a lot of benefits to buying a bundle. It is a little bit pricier, but you get more bang for your buck basically. So these were some of my favorite books that I have purchased separately besides my textbooks, as well as, you know, the, the guide sets that I found the most helpful. If you guys have any pocket guides that you like or any supplemental books that you like, leave them in the comments below for our other viewers here to kind of get an idea and maybe other books that they would be interested in purchasing to kind of help supplement their education. All right, guys, so that is it, and I will talk to you next time.